Good morning! Well, it's been two weeks since I uh, picked up a golf club thanks to my knee. Unfortunately, I just missed the last hurrah of summer. So instead of having four or five videos in the bank playing in the sunshine, I've got nothing. I've run out. And the weather forecast is not great. But this is my first day back attempting to hit a golf ball, so I went down the range. Well, I have a hundred balls that has cost me £9.75, and I split them up into different tasks. So the first ten, I pick out the worst rubbish I can find, and this is the warm-up, and these balls can go absolutely anywhere. I'm not that bothered, but I will try and make corrections as I do it. And this video is looking at 16 minutes long. So I will be chopping bits of this out to make it a little shorter. But essentially, this is my first 10 balls. Stretch and warm up. Now the driving range is a very strange place to be and I wish they wouldn't call it a driving range. It's not really for driving. Now you do see guys go down there and they'll pull out their driver. They'll take the whole bag of clubs, just pull out the driver and they'll hit a hundred drivers in about 20-22 minutes. I would suggest that they walk away from that range a worse golfer than when they arrived. If you think about a round of golf, you hit maybe 36 to 40 full shots with your mates in four hours. So that's a shot every six minutes. Now you can't take that amount of time down the range, but the most important thing to do is to take your time. I will generally hit three balls and then take my glove off, walk away, come back hit three balls, take my glove off, walk away, come back. Depends quite what I'm doing. But what I do is a drill. So I've been given a drill by a professional golfer to go out and practice and develop some muscle memory. Now I'm making changes. I'm trying to turn my hips more going back and then turn them going through. Of course, that means that the arms are out of sync, so I'm going to hit it sideways from time to time. In fact, quite a lot, because I hit shots off mats which I never ever hit on the golf course. So I've got to be patient, you've got to be patient, but when you go to the range to do some work, you need a purpose. And that purpose comes from knowing what your fault is and applying a correction. And it's best done with a mid iron, a seven or a six iron. That's what I do. Right, a quick shout out for Mark Holleran, who uh, I missed yesterday. I went into Gloucester Golf Centre to get some new gloves. Uh, the glove I use is the Mizuno Elite. It's mostly all leather, but they only cost £10. They last for a very, very long time. They don't stretch and go all baggy on you until they're really old. They're the best gloves on the market. Uh, your lads are rather big, Mark. They're big lads. I'll bet they hit the ball a long way. But remember, length is nothing without direction. If it doesn't land on the golf course when you belt it, don't belt it. Get yourself sorted out so it goes straight and then every inch of your length is useful to you. I just had a fiddle with the camera to try and brighten it up a bit and made it worse. Never mind. Well this is the bulk of my practice now. I've picked out 60 balls and I will do a particular drill with it. Or them. So this drill is quite simply trying to turn, going back, and turn, going through. And hopefully my brain works out how to get my arms down 
at the right time. Now I am meeting the ball a lot better. It's definitely going ball turf and the club is traveling downwards as opposed to wiping across it. But to get it really good, I've simply got to put the reps in doing exactly the same thing. You know, this could be seven iron feet together. It could be six iron off a high T peg. Whatever the drill it is, I should be doing 50 or 60 of them. Have a little break, take the glove off, reseat the glove, and then get back to it. I need to thank you all for all your wonderful comments. I mean, it's gone nuts compared to three or four months ago. And I do love talking to people and finding out about people. Because my knowledge of golf is sort of like that much. So I always like to hear what other people are doing, what they're up to and what have you. Um, I'm going through lessons, I'm making changes, so I don't actually need any golf tips. I don't want anything that's going to confuse me compared to what my pro is teaching me. Now I got some tips on that little pitching, chipping video I did, that I need to stand closer to the ball, and that I've got to follow this new fad where you stand the club upright and hit it toe down with the heel of the club off the ground. Well, ever since the sand wedge was invented, R&D people have been working on wedges. Decades of work of R&D, trial and error, working out the grind on this, the way they shape it left to right, the way they shape it front to back, to get great turf interaction. When you get fitted for clubs, the, the first thing they fit you into is the shaft that suits you the best, so that you can hit it straight and you can hit a reasonable height and a reasonable distance. This is the engine of the golf club. The next thing they do is they fit the head, the lie angle, so that when you hit the ball and you hit the ground, this interacts with the ground better. After decades of R&D, they've got this shape exactly where they want it. So why would I do that when I'm chipping? Why would I negate decades of R&D for the latest fad of toe down chipping? If it works for you, crack on. But for me, I'm going to hit this wedge round a green exactly how the designer made it. Well, after I've hit the 60, I'll then go and have a break. That leaves me 30 balls left. What I will do with the 30 balls is basically just work my way slowly up the bag, five or six balls at a time. Now you notice I'm trying to find a particular little high spot on this mat. You know, I hate mats. Um, I've had an injury, a wrist injury off mats. I'm always trying to find the high spot, like a little tea peg. I mean, practice should be easy. There's no need to make it difficult. You know, you wouldn't go and practice out of a divot because you hope that you never ever go in a divot. So, on the range, do the best you can. And yes, the balls are wet. So this is the final part of the session where I work my way up from the 7-iron through 6, 5 and 4 and the ladyboy or hybrid depending which word you want to use. I don't go down the bag and the reason I don't go down the bag is because of that wrist injury that took me out of golf for three months hitting wedges off rock hard mats. But I am meeting the ball very, very well. 
even though the timing isn't quite there because a lot of these are pushed to the right of target I hit the hybrid off the mat and it was nutted now the five wood and that's just it's just beautiful that one was a little tugged but it was really good all the same there's about 10 yards left to target which isn't bad with a five wood but this one is beasted driving ranges are not good places to record you never get the light right and then finally three wood off the deck and then we'll uh, sum it up and say goodbye Well, that's the end of the video. Um, you see, I finished with some five woods and three woods off the deck. Hit them reasonably well. Uh, I didn't hit the driver because, just like most driving ranges, the T-peg was the wrong damn height. And there's nothing worse than trying to alter your swing for a T-peg that's the wrong damn height. So I, I would have normally have hit two drivers, or maybe three, I would have picked a couple of targets on the range as the extremities of my fairway and just hit them down there without trying too hard to knock the cover off the ball. It would be, I would keep trying to do the same swing that I've been doing with my 7 iron. So when you go to the range, take your time. If you've got a machine gun in the next bay, going at a hundred balls in 20 minutes then you know just just walk away for a moment have five minutes away from your bay go and sit down somewhere and let them get on with it because that constant noise of bang 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 with the with the driver is going to disturb your own your own thinking and your own timing and always have a purpose another important fact is the target that you are aiming at. You're picking a little target like this down the range. Make that target the middle of a green. How big is a green? A green is 30 yards front to back and it's 18 yards left to right. As a general rule, that's your standard basic boring green. So when you hit one at your target and it's a little right or it's a little left, or it's a little short, or perhaps you flush one and it's a little long, and we don't do that often. But once you've hit the shot, you watch it and you go, that's on the green. If it's a little wide, you might say, well, I'm chipping. If it's a lot wide, you can say, well, I'm in the bunker there. I'm probably going to make a bogey. So you think to yourself, I've hit a shot that's going to make me a bogey. I've hit a shot that's going to give me a chip and putt par. I've hit a shot on the green that's going to make me a two putt par. And every now and then, you'll hit one absolutely stiff to the one marker you've chosen. And you go, that one's a birdie. So don't be hard on yourself. If, you miss the, if you're missing seven yards left or right, you're on the green. That's how I practice... Um, Lord alone knows when I'm going to be playing and making a proper video. I, I just don't know. This, this filth outside this window just isn't going to let me. Ta-ra!